Welcome back to the Discerning Gamer. Today we're having a look at Rising Storm 2 Vietnam. I was lucky enough to get an invite to the most recent round of closed beta testing and thought I'd share some of my uh, footage and impressions with you. For the uninitiated, Rising Storm was originally a mod for Red Orchestra Ostfront, which was itself based on and developed by a team of modders who released the initial concept for the game as a mod for Unreal Tournament 2K4 uh, to great critical reception. Confusing, I know, so it's a mod of a game based on a mod. Anyway, the modders behind the Rising Storm mod were approached by the team at Tripwire Interactive, which was the development studio formed by the initial Red Orchestra mod team. They obviously knew full well what a passionate team of modders could achieve, and supported the Rising Storm team to found their own studio, Antimatter Games, and help them to publish Rising Storm as an, exp an official expansion of Red Orchestra 2. As you might imagine based on the name Red Orchestra, the series focused on the Eastern Front during World War II. It allowed players to partake in small and large scale battles with up to 60 players and maps that accommodated both infantry focused, vehicle focused and mixed gameplay. Rising Storm took the authenticity and intensity of Red Orchestra and translated that into the Pacific Theatre in World War II, whilst also mixing up the formula in its own way. Rising Storm made some important focal changes when compared to Red Orchestra. So the game primarily focused on infantry battles and moved to an asymmetric model of balance, with the US having a clear advantage in the volume of fire they could put into a fight with their semi-automatic rifles, Thompsons, bars and flamethrowers. The Japanese countered this by having the advantage of terrain in terms of the map design, they were better camouflaged, they have traps and also the ability to shock the Americans with a Banzai charge. It's a great game and still has a dedicated player base, I would say it's definitely worth the £15 that it'll set you back on Steam. So Rising Storm 2 moves the series to Vietnam, which is a natural progression, being that it keeps the ambience and asymmetric themes of the first game, whilst also moving it to an entirely new conflict with new weapons, new environments and new vehicles, specifically helicopters. It's not reinventing the wheel, but I don't think that's really necessary here. It's a game that's made for a niche audience by modders who came from that audience. New maps, new weapons, new commander abilities and pilotable helicopters give more than enough for players to get their teeth into and to justify the price of a full new release. Rising Storm typically mirrors the rush game mode from Battlefield, using capture zones instead of destructible objectives. The maps typically give you multiple avenues of approach and allow the careful tactical player to take ground and be effective most of the time. Because there are only two objectives open to you most of the time, the map is more like a straightforward rectangle and much more constricted than something like Squad for example. This makes the action much more high tempo and frenetic and I think sets the game apart from other highly authentic shooters in that it's very quick and instantly gratifying to get into the combat. However, when paired with a quicker respawn time than we've seen in other entries in the series, I do feel like it diminishes the capacity for teamwork a little bit, which is a shame. So the one thing that I think Red Orchestra and Rising Storm have done better than almost any other multiplayer shooter is capture that elusive element of feel. That magical combination that just makes the game fun to participate in regardless of what you're doing or how well you're doing in terms of objective and KD. The levels look really authentic, the weapons are lovingly modelled and the animations are good. The thing that really blew me away though was the sound. It's about as close to being shot at as you'd want to get. The game is really good at putting you in a soldier's shoes and making you feel stressed out or hyped up by the situation that you're in. Weapon recall makes you feel the impact of each round you squeeze off 
There's gas venting out the barrel and a satisfying report and muzzle flash. When you're under fire, the screen fuzzes to simulate being suppressed, and this also happens when you see friendlies die around you, which I thought was a great touch. Being suppressed does make it really difficult to fight effectively, and this does mean that you can suppress people and enact more authentic tactics and play. There are even details like wounded soldiers bleeding on the floor giving off harrowing pleas for help or cries of pain in the middle of combat and it's details like that that other games miss out on that give Rising Storm just that extra level of immersion and feel to the play. You even experience this from the first person when you're knocked out and it gives this kind of grim weight to the experience. By contrast, when you're shot in the head you are instantly snapped out of the experience to a black screen and it kind of reminds you of the shock and fragility of your soldier in a really effective way. One thing that I feel like Rising Storm 2 missed out on was actually modelling your player's body from the first person perspective so you can't look down and see your torso and legs and that's always something that in other games like Squad for example that I feel just gives you another level of immersion and place and really puts you in the battlefield and I, I feel like that was a shame to miss out on this particular one and it will bug me but it's, it's definitely not a, uh, a deal breaker as far as the game's concerned. All of this accumulates into a game which appeals to some degree to a milsim niche without being a total ball ache to get into and play and there's a lot to be said for that. The overwhelming force of the experience makes it fun just participating, but there's also plenty of depth and opportunity for rewarding organised play with people that you know rather than just pubs. I had a really good time with the beta, which overall seems very polished outside of some very obviously placeholder assets, and I can see myself picking this up in the future. Have any of you guys played in the beta? What did you think from what you've seen in this video? Let me know in the comments and uh, please also give me any constructive criticism in the comments as well. That's greatly appreciated. I've got some more footage of the game here. So I'm just going to let that run with some of the commentary that I recorded whilst I was actually playing it. If you enjoyed the video guys, please do drop me a like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Yeah, definitely fried that guy. Love the effects of the bullet casings. Am I hit? Is that a, is that a graze or what?
Definitely just winged him. Good. 